see. So our next speaker, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about, so Rick did a great job talking about some of the sampling that um, the state of Mississippi did, and now um, John, uh, Dr. John Garisco is gonna talk a little bit about some of the chemical testing that was done. And he is um, an environmental toxicologist for the Alabama Department of Public Health. So come on up, John. Uh, thank you. Um, I'd like to share a little bit about what we did. Um, we our, our program was very much similar to that of Mississippi, uh, except that we split ours into, there's, like people, every, every state's different. Uh, we have two different strategies in the state. We have a Department of Agriculture and Industries and they handle all of the, the testing at, at, the food pro, at the seafood processors, whereas the State um, Bureau of Chemical Laboratories, which is the health department, um, we handled all of the, the wild caught samples. So um, essentially how that happened was, is we didn't go out and catch the fish. Unfortunately, Marine Resources Division took care of that for us. Um, we, they submitted 40 samples per month um, of a mix of finfish, crabs, shrimp, and oysters. Um, the ag and industry sampled 30 um, <coughs> samples of, of finfish and shellfish groups monthly. And as far as the chemical testing goes, we use the same methodology as um, NOAA. In fact, we sent our laboratory personnel to the Pascagoula Laboratory, NOAA's Pascagoula Laboratory, and for about a good three or four or five days, they, they trained with NOAA on how to, to prep the sample, how to, to, to do the, the extraction and run it and interpret the data. So we, uh, we found out a couple things along the way, one of which is, is uh, our equipment was sensitive enough to, to detect when the emergency generator was being cranked to, for, to make sure that it was functioning correctly. Uh, so there was enough exhaust that somehow trickled into the building that we could detect it on our machine. So we were confident on our data, we can assure you of that. But um, where we did differ a little bit was is that ag and industry, because of their more, of their greater role in, in regulations within the state, they took 20% of all the samples that were, were collected and they used the older method, not the fast method, but the older method where they did the full characterization. So we were really confident that, that we never really had a real problem with, with any of the, the samples that we did, but we did process a lot of samples. Um, the only thing that we never really did was inspect the samples or test the samples for metals. That was one of the things that came up early on in the spill as far as do the samples need to be tested for, for, for nickel and vanadium. And there was some discussion on whether or not um, the metals themselves could be present enough to pose a, a risk. And it, it, as far as metals go, metals are kind of tough as far as, you, you've got to get into a pretty good bit of metal, depending on which metal it is, before you can see some toxicity. And vanadium and nickel are, are, are not really so considered to be that toxic. Not carcinogenic, so. Um, so, um, Essentially, what we wound up doing was, is we wound up testing over 2,000 different, or 2,000 samples. We had, at the end, we had over 1,100 fin fish. We had 100 oysters. We had close to 700 shrimp samples, and we had over 200 crab samples. Um, we, if you take a look at our website, you'll see that we have 
what we call a lot of detections. But the reason why we have a lot of detections is, is we counted a trace at the detect because even though it wasn't above the level of quantitation, it was it was there, something was there, so we agreed in the beginning that we would count trace. And so it kind of came around and, and got us a little bit because we had more detections than what some of the other states showed, but it was because we were detecting a, a fair amount of trace. So um, we never exceeded um, level of concern, one. Uh, and to tell you the truth, I didn't really put up any of our data because it gets pretty boring when you look at a, a spreadsheet that has nothing but below LOD for the, all the blocks in it. So it's kind of like, okay. Um, so I will say that initially we did have a fair amount of, of, of detects, but towards the end it was nothing but below LOD. So um, we are confident in our seafood, and in fact, to tell you the truth, I don't see how anybody couldn't be confident of our seafood. Gulf seafood is the most heavily tested seafood in the world, I think, right now. And, you know, um, I think that, that we've got a very good um, database to show that our seafood is safe. So. Um, if you would like, uh, our seafood data is available on our website. Uh, so that being said, um, I know we're kind of running a little bit behind, so and does anybody have any questions?